You know, if they brought back a Phantom Zone projector, they could take care of Salem just like that. Just trap her in the Phantom Zone. What's she gonna do? Immortality's not an issue anymore. I'm just saying. So we come to part two of Justice League x Ruby, Heroes and Huntsmen. I reviewed part one on the channel, so if you want to see it before this video, I've linked it in the card in the description. Justice League and Ruby have crossed over multiple times at this point, mostly in the comics, since both properties are owned by Warner Brothers, so it's not surprising we would get so much content like this. Admittedly, I don't think they needed to squeeze two movies out of this though. I think the pacing suffered a lot because of it, particularly in part one. Part two is a little bit better, but I think it would have worked fine as just one movie. It might have ended up being a little bit packed, but still. I do think if you want to watch these movies, you should just watch them back to back. And it's unfortunate that we had to wait months to be able to do that, because this way it feels like a much more complete story. It's kind of like when Hollywood adapts long book series. They often take the last book and split it into two parts, mostly just to milk the series. So the first part ends up being mostly set up with not much payoff, and then the second part is mostly the climax without a lot of setup. And it doesn't really feel like the most satisfying viewing experience. That's pretty much how I feel with these two movies. I think these films were fun for what they were. Crossovers are usually just meant to be fun fan service, and admittedly it's not very deep, but we did get some strong character moments that I appreciated, although I do feel like the writer maybe doesn't really understand the Justice League all that well. Nothing in this film was as egregious as Batman in the first film saying that he wanted to stay on Remnant so he could have powers, which was pretty odd to say the least. But then in this one, they had scenes where like Vixen is talking to Batman in a way that came off as kind of insensitive, and in my opinion, not all that in character. I think they were going for a playful banter, but it kind of came off as awkward. Were you a young fat pup donning the cowl before your voice cracked? I mean, she knows he's Bruce Wayne, and his parents' death is public knowledge. It just seems like an odd choice. Maybe they could have come up with a different kind of friendly banter that wasn't so personal. There was also a point where they were talking about the weaknesses of the Justice League, and they just listed whatever fights Lantern's ring. That's a choice. They could have at least used the color yellow. I mean, that's not canon anymore, but that doesn't stop them from still using it in the comics. While I wasn't expecting these movies to be perfect, it would have been nice if they had taken a little more time to research the Justice League, in my opinion. They are half of the crossover after all. The movie opens with Ruby giving us a rundown of everything that's gone on up until this point. I actually think the first movie would have benefited from some narration too, because they kind of just threw us into it, and if you aren't familiar with Ruby or the Justice League, you might be confused. I understand why they would give a recap here, considering this is a part two of a movie that came out months ago, but I'm just saying. So the previous film had the Justice League going to Remnant, where they meet Team Ruby and what's left of Team Juniper, only to discover that they weren't actually in Remnant, but a computer simulation of it. Created by Kilgore and a mysterious partner of his, they're able to defeat Kilgore and travel back to their worlds, but things were kind of just left to hang at the end of it. So that's where this film picks up. Unfortunately, Grimm have come to the DC universe, and while they fight them off, they try to locate Remnant to get help from the other side. Apparently for the Justice League, it's only been a couple of days, but it's been weeks for the gang from Remnant, Apparently the first part took place during Volume 7, but now it's after Volume 9. It's interesting that they put this in the main Ruby timeline. I don't know if it's officially canon or just tangentially related, but still interesting. Unfortunately, this time around we're only getting Team Ruby. Granted, Ren and Nora didn't have much to do in the previous movie, but it is disappointing we don't get to see a reunion between Jean and Jessica. Jessica even asks about him. Their dynamic was honestly the best part of the last film. Jean did go through a lot in volume 9, so it might have been interesting to see Jessica help him through his issues the way he helped her, but they don't get to interact at all. And GL doesn't really have that much to do this time around. It is still a really large cast, even without the three Juniper members. After some shenanigans, Team Ruby is able to cross over into the DC universe, and they get a new change of clothes to match. Interestingly enough though, Blake loses her faunus traits, so I guess she's just human now. Let me just... <laughs> There we go. Talk about mixed reality. I like their outfits a lot. Blake is the only one wearing a mask though, which I think is a little weird. I guess there are a lot of superheroes who don't wear masks, including in this cast, but I still like them a lot. I also like that Blake has a ninja look going on, which makes a lot of sense for her. Yang looks a lot like an Amazon, which definitely works for her too. I think it would have been cool if they had incorporated a hood into Ruby's design to call back to her Little Red Riding Hood roots, but I do like her scarf and the rose inside 
insignia on her chest. Very classic superhero. I think Weiss looks adorable in this Ice Princess costume, and it manages to be fitting for a superhero world yet stylish, while being true to herself. I think there's a good mix here. Superhero costumes tend to usually just be a bodysuit and leotards and stuff like that. It can get a little repetitive and underwhelming, so I'm glad they weren't afraid to experiment with these designs. They get powers that are similar to their semblances, like Ruby can teleport, and Rose Petal still follow her as she does so. Blake can control shadows, which would make sense given her shadow clone abilities back home, but they give her more versatility here, and Yang can shoot fireballs from her fists. Unfortunately, Weiss doesn't get any powers, but it's obvious they're making her a parallel to Bruce, since they're both rich kids with parent issues, granted for very different reasons, but still, and she's still able to do well without them. Although I do wish they'd given her a sword instead of a gun. I guess I'm just so used to her with a sword. And that is where her expertise is. We get some nice scenes of character interactions between the girls in the Justice League, except for Blake anyway, which seems a little odd. How come everyone else got a moment and she didn't? But anyway, Ruby and Clark discuss how difficult it can be to be a leader. Ruby even talks about her mom, which gives Clark the chance to tell her about how he's adopted, but he still keeps his birth parents close to his heart. Weiss and Bruce share a scene because of course they do, but Weiss is dealing with the trauma of losing her home, since Atlas was destroyed in Ruby proper. But Weiss comes to learn that her true home is the friends she made along the way. Cheesy, but sweet. And Yang ends up having a conversation with Flash, which admittedly I wasn't expecting, but Flash is kind of traumatized from what happened in the first movie. Being possessed ended up causing him to have basically an identity crisis, and he keeps hearing Kilgore taunting him. Yang ends up using her arm to relate to him, and she fell into a similar sort of depression, but was ultimately able to overcome it. She reminds him of the importance of his friends, and to take care of himself, instead of obsessing over this villain. It was actually pretty interesting. The big bad is finally revealed, and it turns out to be none other than Arthur Watts, which is actually pretty cool. He caused a lot of trouble in Ruby proper, but never actually got to face Team Ruby, and then he died kind of unceremoniously. But I think it does make sense that he would have a contingency plan in case something like this happened, and actually seeing the girls getting to fight him was pretty satisfying. I think overall I did enjoy these movies. Sure, they're not perfect, and I still don't care for how they write the Justice League in certain ways, but they're not really meant to be taken too seriously anyway. But it was a fun time, and I enjoyed the fan service. So yeah, not great, but not bad either. But that's my opinion. What did you guys think? Did you enjoy Justice League X Ruby? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Before I go, I'd like to give a shout out to at CartoonZany on X for this awesome piece of fan art of my new VTuber model, along with M, who doesn't officially have a design yet, but this was really cool, and we really appreciate the art. I love how they mirror each other and the complementary color schemes. Very well done, and thanks again. I'd like to give a shout out to the channel members, Tyrant Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Man Sir, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Takari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Felix Bam, Soundboy Zero, Zero, Kitsune Fiora, Lucas Geist, Jay Draws, Blue Spirit, Bandito Bane, Meowzers, Sky, Jin KZ, Philip, Stutania, Isaac Martinez, Lil, Miyamoto Naosugi, and Data Dine Executive. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support the channel that way. And if you enjoyed this content, I'd appreciate it if you left a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and that part's free. Thanks again everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.